Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, please invite your friends. I decided to go early because I think I'm getting tired and soon I better go sleep. I thought I can stay longer. And always we keep up our promises. We said we will be, you know, like I made a schedule to go on air. So we are here. Uh, before we start today in the title, as you see, six questions the Muslims ask you. First, we again we are we have to answer some silly atheist. Uh, one of you he sent me a video about uh, uh, what his name uh, Abdullah Samir. He was in David Wood program, and they asked him about a comment he liked, and it was you know showing disrespect, and he said he apologized anyway. Forget about it. But again, he repeated again and showed us how shallow atheists are when he said, well, I like the comment because a Christian prince, he insists that circle is not a flat. And here you see how silly somebody tried to say he is an engineer. You know, an engineer is somebody knows what he's talking about. I mean, I mean, this is a very, very simple thing when we say a circle. Circle, first of all, uh, even in what it's called science today it have a definition and it is the definition says it is a shape it is a shape this is the science defi the definition of circle dimensional shape made by drawing a curve so circle first of all is not flat and anyone he say it's flat that's mean he is a foolish stupid because it is not an object this is number one so how it can be flat unless you are certified stupid it's a it is a dimension of shape and this is science not my words by drawing a curve it's a curve you draw now here we are trying to apply our understanding of mathematics in, in a word or a statement said thousand of years ago about a shape they were not speaking about mathematics they were speaking about uh, drawing a line they are speaking about a shape so it's very silly when you see somebody he claimed to be an engineer yet he did not and he cannot understand that this is speaking about a shape and that shape is the shape of the earth not the shape of a curve <laughs> you know and if you look with me here it says in the Bible, it doesn't matter what translation you read. Like he said, oh, uh, it's, it doesn't say globe. What? Okay, what if I, we use this translation? Here we go. This translation use the word the globe. He said, if it's a globe, that is like uh, makes sense. But it doesn't matter actually. First of all, because this is a statement or word used thousand of years ago, when you don't even have definition of a, of a mathematics. Uh, 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 circle we are talking about a shape and this is translation of a word which is equal to the shape of a circle or a ball they are not teaching you mathematics so when somebody read a book written thousands of years ago he tried to apply his imagination on that book showing us how shallow they are and you will notice here it says he sit upon i will use i will use the circle one the one he don't like Upon the circle of the earth, not just upon the earth, upon the circle. So where he is sitting, it's not in a flat place he is sitting. I mean, even the verse in the front of you, if you have little, if you open your eyes, if you squeeze them a little bit, you will see it says he is sitting upon the circle. So how he is sitting upon the circle and yet he is sitting in a flat place. To make it simple for the illusionate, delusionate atheist. If we draw a line here, that will be the circle we are talking about. So the Bible is saying he is sitting upon the circle. So 
in order to believe that the Bible is saying that the earth is a flat that's mean there's no circle at all because he will not sit in the circle he will sit in the flat space it doesn't say that it said he's it's set specifically here on the circle now take into consideration any part of this earth is a circle anyway so the same as an insect sitting in the in the circle not inside the circle upon the circle not inside so look how they try to fabricate the meaning and they make it because it doesn't matter what you say still they will not accept you know what i mean it doesn't matter really okay they say that the bible says the earth is a flat we show them that the bible says the circle of the earth he says oh this is a flat that's stupid of you to say because here we are speaking about a shape we are not speaking about a virtual circle Virtual circle simply doesn't exist. And by the way, there's nothing it's called circles exist. Here is a trusted translation for a word used thousand of years ago. It is not even the word is not even a circle, but this is what we have equal to it today, which is we can say a circle. Different language, different history, different time. Speaking about a globe, a ball, you can name it whatever you want. It is something around, not perfect, round, nothing. Actually, even circle is not perfect. There's no circle which is perfect, even in mathematics. Perfect circle does not exist. So when we show them, the Bible says, sitting upon this circle, where he is sitting, upon this circle. Still he says, it is flat. Are you guys getting my, uh, my, my point? Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? When we say upon the circle because to be upon the circle huh, that's mean this is where you sit okay so if he is claiming that this area here is not a circle based on him he is saying it's like a coin and here is not a circle this area here is not a circle you know and no this is not what it says it says he is sitting upon the circle on the circle so the the location of this insect the grasshopper is on the circle read with me carefully the verse in the bible and you will see how those are blind it doesn't matter how much you read for them they will not they don't want to read he sits upon the circle not inside the circle of the earth he is located specifically in a curve and that is us <laughs> you know what I mean so it doesn't matter how much you show them still they will be in denial because this is embarrassing they look like a bunch of fool who keeps saying the Bible says the earth is a flat there why because the Bible says the four corners of the earth well, this is a figure of a speech until now you use it in university until now you use it in dictionary until now you use it in all kind of field So here just to answer the silly atheist and I find them very silly and very foolish and they have a lack of intellect they can't even read English properly and English is not my first language sits upon the circle not inside it which means where he said is a curve this is what it says where he said is a curvy circle all right now if we continue we go back to the topic which we supposed to talk about it I found this article and actually I like those uh, questions here they are organized in the front of us please guys invite your friends not many people knows we are on air it's too early but as I said I prefer to go and do this before I sleep the Muslim they ask you questions before we go and study those questions, you need to ask yourself first, what is the purpose of a question? 
you see there's a questions we ask to learn right usually purpose of a question is a question to know to find out uh, to get answers put into your consideration Muslim don't ask you questions to get the answer the Muslim they ask you a question just a question I don't know if you understand what I'm saying in a school I might ask my teacher why etc just to know to get the correct answer and then I learn from him the Muslim he will not ask you to learn from you the Muslim is asking you to make you question your faith to make you have a doubt about it to make you disbelieve not really because he is looking for an answer because already this question been asked thousands and millions of time and we answered them and we refuted them but it doesn't matter really how many time you answer the question is still they will ask the same question after five minutes right Jesus and Islam this is the name of this article you can search it the website is called every student I don't know this website is made by who I just saw this article I don't really care for the article as a whole I care for uh, the questions so we can go over them has the Bible been changed from its original you see Christians when they when they meet with the with the Muslim and he asked them this question if you read this article right away this Christian person who made this article he start refuting the Muslims about no the Bible is not changed why you want to do that why you want to do that if a Muslim says to you that the Bible been changed you should ask him are you talking about the Bible of Allah how embarrassing how embarrassing see the, the Christians they forgot that when they are speaking to a Muslim a Muslim he claimed that he have the same God as we do and not only he claimed that his God is the one who said the Bible he is the one who sent the Torah he is the one who sent the gospel so why you want to say to him you are wrong let us make it more simple if somebody he came to me he said he have a God his name is Allah he have a book it's called Torah he sent it and that book is corrupt what's your business <laughs> do you understand me guys what's your business laugh at him and say yes thank you very much Allah cannot be God based on your question because if your God Allah is God how he sent the book it's called Torah we don't care what the Torah is here in this case this is for sure this is not our Torah but obviously he is speaking about the Torah sent by his God that is a reason for us actually right away just the second you say that to him he will say no 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 I'm not talking about this I'm talking about your book you say to him no there's nothing it's called my book according to your Quran this is the book of your God are we listening people are we listening The second you show him how silly he is because simply he is saying to us that his God book is corrupt. So what's my business? That is an additional proof and reason to refuse Allah to be God. Because if Allah is God, how he allow anyone to corrupt his book? Here we go. The Quran says that he has revealed to thee Muhammad the scriptures with the truth, confirming which was revealed before it. Actually, it doesn't say that in Arabic. It says Musaddiqan Lima Baina Yaday, confirming what is between his hand. And he sent down. There's no before it, by the way. Here, this is a false translation. Always Muslim they don't give uh, an honest translation. Never take a Muslim translation into consideration for a second. And this is why I am now working in a Quran translation. You see what went before it what went before it where where in Arabic it says what went before it nowhere change the translator hoping maybe we can find one honest Muslim translator confirming what come before it nowhere it says such a thing it's a lie 
why because the Muslim they will say uh, well if he is confirming what is between his hands as it says in Arabic that's mean Islam all of it is based in a lie how he is confirming what is between his hand confirming what was revealed before it, where it says that the Arabic in front of me نزل عليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه لما بين يديه to which is between his hand they never stop lying and because you don't speak Arabic they can fool you and they can fabricate as they wish see all of them they are saying confirming what was before it but this is not what the Quran is saying I'm changing translation after translation here this guy he's saying confirming of books revealed before he did not say what is between his hands the whole the whole words between his hands is gone not even a single translation is mentioning the word hands believe it this is how much dishonesty they have in their translation another translation uh, uh, this is like different language look like it and this is Dutch let us see um, Modudi. Okay, here this says again, uh, confirming the earlier books, confirming the earlier books, but this is not what Arabic says. You can take right now, this is chapter 3, verse number 3, you can take the Arabic and you post it in Google Translation. Actually, you know what? Let me open Google Translation and show you. I will do it right in the front of your eyes. And you will see that the word between his hands is going to appear. Google. Translation. All right, we are here. I will copy the text in the front of your eyes as it is. Copy and then paste. Translation. Do you see it, guys? Do you see it? The book has come down to to you in truth, verified. For sure, translation is very accurate. To his hand, which means what is between his hands. <laughs> what is? Why all the translator did not mention the word hands? Are you getting my point? Not a single translator he mentioned that it says in Arabic what is between his hands. Why the word hand disappear? Don't think it's a mistake. Don't think it was. You can't see it. Oh, uh, sorry, guys. Uh, my, my uh, it's my fault. All right, let us do it again. It's my fault. Sorry. I copied here the text. This is chapter three, verse number three. I apologize I thought you can see it and then I went here and I paste exactly what the text is saying and here we go the book has come down to you in truth verifying to his hand which means between to his between his to his hands why in the English translation not even one of them saying that I was changing translation but look like you guys you were not seeing it but as you see all translation doesn't matter you can try I did not see one of them saying what is between his hands why the word hands disappear why the sentence where it says what confirming what is between his hands disappear in the translation this is what it's called taqiyya protection to Islam because that will expose the lies where they say that the Bible is corrupt because how Muhammad he confirmed a book between his hand but yet it's corrupt are we following this is the purpose of hiding the word between his two hands 
I will open Islamic interpretation website. At Tafsir. This is owned by the King of Jordan. Look in the Muslim translation where they say confirming what it was before it. But this is not what the Arabic says. He sent you Jibreel with the scriptures in order to show the truth and the falsehood confirming Allah divine oneness and which was revealed. And here you see this is between two brackets of scriptures. But none of them saying what between his hands. Suddenly the word between his hands is gone, disappear. If we if we take the word between his two hands here in Arabic, and we put it in the search engine as it is, and we search. Look with me here. This is the word between Baina. Let us change the color. Baina yadayha. Baina yadayhi. Baina aydihim. Baina yadayhi. Baina yadayhi. Baina yadayhi. It's repeated all over the Quran. Now let us look at the translation. You see, here we have three verses repeated after one after one, and the same is in chapter 2, verse number 97. Lima yadayhi. Let us see chapter 2, verse number 97, how the translation will come. Look, there's no hands at all. There is no hands. The word here is not exist. Confirming what is between his hands, we cannot even see it. Change. Nowhere we can find the word hands. Let us copy the Arabic text. This is different chapter. Chapter 2, verse number 97. Copy. Paste. Translation. He brought it. I look like here maybe they cannot take the whole text. Let us shorten this to see why it's not coming. Here you see it says, Lima Baina Yadahi. You see this part? Here? This is the Arabic saying between his hands. Take this part off. For some reason, is not seeing this the, the, the end of the verse. Okay, let us take this part off. Read this part. Here we go. The word hands now is appearing. Certify to his hand. It doesn't say that, actually. Confirming what is between his hands. That's what it says. But in the English translation, we cannot find that. What the purpose is to fool people and to say, oh, it doesn't say between his hands. When in fact, it says that. Now, I am going to play another game. Look how many verses in the Quran. It says that the Quran confirm what is between their hands. But I will do something else. Not only all those verses saying that. Like as an example here, the word Baina Yadehi, do you see it? Baina Yadehi. If we go and click at this chapter, most likely I will find the word Baina Yadehi translated correctly. Because here it's not going to be embarrassing to Islam because here is not talking about the Bible.
Uh, certainly the stories beyond people where people understanding what being narrated in the Quran of fabrication is rather confirmed the book that proceeded uh -huh. uh, because here at the end of the day is going to lead to talk about the, all the books not necessarily the Bible before it so here we go they corrupt the translation again the word by Nayadehi is not appearing in the translation but in Arabic it says here by Nayadehi no matter where you try they still lie because at the end of the day the books which is before is about going to be about the torah and the gospel so they decide to to, to fabricate this one too confirming of allah existing books look here the translation he did not use the word what is between his hand he says confirming confirmation of Allah existing books how you can confirm existing books if they are fabricated if we continue we will go and search for something else in the Quran please take a note of what we say and don't forget to download the video after we finish in those verses here the Quran used different word which is not what is between their hands it used confirming what is with them Chapter 2, verse number 89. Musaddiqan lima ma'ahum. Believing in what they possess with them. Translation, please. Confirming the scriptures which is already possessed. This is a translation. The fact doesn't say which is already possessed. It says what they possess. Change the translator. This is who? This is Maududi. Let us go to uh, Yusuf Ali. Different translator. Read carefully. Confirming what is with them. So the Muslims, they work so hard in the translation to hide that the, the Quran says that Muhammad confirmed what is with them. And finally, we got them busted. Do you see it? Muhammad in the Quran saying that Allah confirming what is, is, not was, not revealed before as they, as they lie, what is with them. So how a Muslim, he says to me that your Bible is corrupt, and then 600 years after that, the Quran saying that Allah confirming what is with them. Who is confirming who? And that appear in more than one place. Let us go to other verse, chapter 291, chapter 2101. It's saying the same. Confirming what they possess. What they possess. the Bible, the Torah, the Gospel. Change the translator, Yusuf Ali. Do you see it? Yusuf Ali here, he changed the translation. Suddenly it says, confirming what was with them. But just a second ago, he, he translated the same statement in different verse, confirming what is with them 
amazingly so to make it simple when a Muslim he says to you your Bible has been changed don't defend the Bible say to him thank you very much for agreeing that the Bible of Allah which sent by Allah is a changed and then the Muslim he have no choice except laughing at himself because according to Islam it is Allah who sent the Bible so why I want to defend that Bible he's talking about the book of his God not my book We as a Christian, we don't believe that our book sent by a God, his name is Allah. So he's talking about something and you are talking about something else. Are we getting the point? Say to him, thank you very much. Who is the one who sent the Torah? He say Allah. Who is the one who sent the Injil? He say Allah. Say to him, thank you very much. So you are saying the book of Allah, the Torah and Injil, Allah he could not protect them and that is a clear proof that Allah cannot be God because at the end of the day the one who protect his book is the one who owned the book do we agree I am a human being I am not eternal I die a human being is corrupt a human being is whatever blah 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 a human being some people they sell even their their honor for a dollar so who is the one is in charge of protecting the book the one who owned the book who owned the book allah so you are saying to me that allah he has a book he sent it down but yet he cannot protect his book now here we need to ask another question this muslim is just calling me liar because he is he is possessed he cannot answer me. Do you see how he repeat himself? This is a sign of possession, you know, possessed by the devil. Look, if we say, if we ask the Muslim a very simple question, I want somebody to write this question in the screen or in the chat. Was the Torah, the book of Allah, corrupt by the will of Allah or against his will? Who is the Muslim want to give us the answer? Please write the question in the, in the chat. Was the Torah of Allah and the Injil of Allah corrupt by Allah will or against his will? What we should say? Who is a Muslim want to give me the answer? The second you ask this question, Islam is in trouble. Because if a Muslim he says the Quran, sorry, Allah, he allowed the Torah to corrupt and the gospel by his will. That's mean he is the he is shaitan. If he say this is against his will, that's mean he's not God. So which one? How many of you remember the question, guys? This is why I said, can you write it down in the chat? I didn't see anyone write it. Anyone remember what was the question I asked? Forget about this guy, uh, Amir. He's just a kid. He's trying to disturb us and try to make you not to think with me and not to remember what I am saying. You are smarter than this. Let him be like a little monkey who jumped from, like, from a place to a place, but he cannot answer us. What was the question? Was the Torah and the gospel of Allah corrupted by the agreement of Allah will or against his will do we remember another question do we remember if a Muslim he says finally somebody he wrote it in the in the screen if a Muslim he says well it is by Allah will because everything happened in this earth by Allah will so Allah is shaitan He is the one Behind it, this is Allah will You see it If the Muslim he says against his will 
does mean Allah he could not protect his book because this is not his will and that's mean he is not God so which one is Allah either you have to choose now one of two either he is shaitan he is the one who he corrupted the book because nothing can happen against his will or he is unable to protect his book which means he is a weak person who cannot or maybe he's not exist either way Islam is shish kebab so always we need to remember that when a Muslim he question Christianity in fact he is a question his own religion without knowing because Muhammad by claiming that he have the same God of the Christians and he is the one who sent the Torah and he is the one who sent the Injil he got himself busted now do remember in the future if we have an argument with Muslims what we say don't defend the Bible don't say to him it's not corrupt say to him you agree the Bible of Allah is corrupt love let us laugh at Allah in a second he will grab his tail and he will grow he don't want to talk about it he will change the topic <laughs> right he will change the topic he don't want to talk about it no more say to him let us talk about it come on explain to us how Allah Bible is corrupted tell us more about your God this God who cannot protect his book tell us please tell us please Please, I want to I wanna get more information about the God. His name is Allah. He sent books. He sent 124,000 books. Have you ever heard of a God like this? Look at this. 124,000 messengers. And then Allah, he was able to save one book. <laughs> That's hilarious. Imagine Allah is a lib li like librarian. He is a he's a guy. He work in a library, and you give him a big library, have one hundred twenty four thousand books, and then you come back after some time, and he says to you, "Oh, sorry, I lost all the books. I have only one left. I was able to protect only one book." right only one how in the world anyone can believe in such a garbage so my advice for Christians when the Muslims like you know we saw a debate between Mimi hijab and David would if I am you know I, I will not even you know I will say yeah thank you very much you just agreed that your God Allah cannot be God change change the way you talk to them you know just try to view the question in different way in different dimension in different direction you always as a christian answer questions as a christian first understand the question then answer it understand the question in the background of the questioner not just right away jump to answer a muslim is talking about a Bible and a Torah they are corrupt what's my business those are according to him those are the books of his God so let us laugh at this God who cannot protect his books are we clear so did we learn now how we can answer them easy because let me tell you something you can spend 10,000 years from now showing him manuscript giving him ref and he will not listen the second you say to him oh you are saying to me Allah book it's uh, the second he see how embarrassing it is the second he will run away so why you want to waste your time he is not asking you the question to learn to get an answer he is asking you the question to question and before you answer the question by the way he have a second question ready for you like even before you try even to finish because he will not give you a break so maybe you will ask him a question so he will not give you a chance to ask him a question so you start answering the first one about the Bible is corrupt and then before you finish he hit you with second one so okay so now you continue and this way 
you will not be able to ask him a question about his funny cult so look what happened now has the Bible been changed from its original the answer is you are saying to me that the Bible the Torah and the gospel of Jesus was sent by Allah right you say yes and you are saying to me now asking me the question let us let us recorrect the question you are saying to me as a Muslim has been the but has has the Bible of Allah been changed from its original so do you see guys what we did do you notice what we did here we have to correct the question so the Abdul will look embar embarrassed has the Bible of Allah here we have to write the word Allah of Allah been changed from its original this is the question now we have a correct question because this is what the Muslim is talking about if he say to you no no I'm talking about your book he says I don't have a book this is the book of God anyway and as long as you say you claim that it's Allah who sent this book so why now suddenly you deny because if the book I have today is is a is a changed one that will not change the fact that your book is corrupt it's gone Oh, what you are saying to me that the book this is now is not, the, the book is a fabricated so this is you are saying to me still that the book of your God is gone it's fabricated it's gone so do you see how silly the question is now we continue but always you notice Christians they will never learn you know you say to them a thousand times please don't debate him about that because it's a waste of time they will not they are not asking you a question to learn Question number two. Are we done with the question number one, guys? For sure, we can show them Muhammad taking an oath in the Torah. Do you remember my debate with the Abdul? I said to him, Why your prophet? He took an oath in the Torah. He said he is being nice. Being nice, that's mean he's a hypocrite. I will never be nice and swear in the Quran saying, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. That's not being nice. That's mean being a liar. So we have any proofs that Muhammad, he himself, he confirmed the book which we have. Now we continue. Does God say that one religion will replace another? Judaism, then Christianity, then Islam. This question, I did not hear it much really, but as long as he have it there, let us go over this. First of all, Islam is a very funny religion. Why? All of us we knew that the Muslim they say that Isa was a Muslim, right? Moses was a Muslim, Adam was a Muslim, Abraham was a Muslim. Question Why the Quran then call us Christians and Jews if we are Muslims? And why the Quran promising us to go to heaven, yet we are not Muslims look what the Quran says in a ladina amenu well ladina had one Nasara had from coming from the word Yahud Yahudi is a word goes for a Jew so had is the Jews those who they are Jews and those who they are Nasara according to the Muslim Nasara is the question and the Sabian and whoever believe in Allah they are going to go to heaven okay as long we are according to Islam the true Christians are Muslims so why we are called the Christians and why the Jews are called Jews and why the Quran in different verses says that the Christian and the Jews they would like them to follow their religion if we have the same religion <laughs> and why the Quran called the the, 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 the the Jews they call them the children of Israel and why the Quran call us something very funny by the way proving Islam to be a, the most funny stupid cult ever anyone will notice with me what I'm talking about what the Muslims they call us in the in the Quran Jews and Christian together what they call us call us
Anyone remember? Is it the Quran call us the people of the book? And that is in many many places. Look at this. Look at this funny. This verse I find it. It's written by somebody who was eating too much banana in the zoo. Quite a number of the people of the book wish they could turn you, which means Muslims, back to infidelity. Hold on. How we are trying to make the Muslims go back to infidelity, yet you call us people of the book. <laughs> But imagine the Muslim they keep saying to us that you Christian your book is corrupt Correct You Jews your book is corrupt, but then their city God call us people of the book How we don't have a book yet you call us people of the book It's like speaking to somebody he have no tires you say to him the guy with the, the, the guy with the tires a guy who have no car You say the guy with the car a guy with no camel, you say to him, the guy with the camel. How you call us the people of the book if we don't have a book? The second you call us by that name, you confirm that we are truly following the book. Are we following, guys? Do you see how silly this religion? The problem is that we as a Christians, when we read the Quran, we don't think deeply and we don't take notes seriously we just read most of people read you know I mean they, nobody really notice how stupid this statement is what do you mean the people of the book how you say they have no books and you call them people of the book they have no book the guy with the Mercedes but he have no Mercedes Crazy stupidity, and the same verse saying that the people who have a book they want you to be a kafir. How they are following a book of Allah and they want you to be a kafir because the second you say they are people of the book, it's mean they are really people who preserve the book and they follow a book and they are decent people. That is a description should not be given for someone is bad. Are we listening, guys? Do we understand? So the second the Quran call us that title, that is description for all of us as a group that we are people who follow the book of God. How silly. How silly you say that are people of the book, but they are not good people. So why you are saying we are people of the book? If we are following the devil, how you call us people of the book? And this is always the problem we see when we study books. We read with our eyes, but we don't read really with our brain. We need to think, we need to analyze information. And here, that those books, those people who they are people of the book, they want you to be a kafir and they want you to be a bad person. But hold on. Yet you call them people of the book. You must be stupid to say that. It's like saying those who follow the law, they are outlaw. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like saying obedient citizen is outlaw. He cannot be obedient citizen and at the same time is outlaw. The second you call him people of the book, it's mean they are obedient citizen, obeying the book, and they are even their name is people of the book. To the point, not only they are obedience, they are really the book people. How in the world somebody can believe in such a madness? And this is, can be found all over the Quran. People of the book.
people of the book people of the book all over the Quran we are people of the book not in one verse not in two verse look how many chapter 2 105 chapter 2 109 chapter 3 164 chapter 365 chapter 369 chapter uh, uh, 370 I mean and just to show you that the one who wrote the Quran he have a very low IQ I want to show you that verse and I hope you guys you take reference so next time we mention it I want to see in the text who of you will remember it chapter 3 verse number 65 if you want to show somebody that the God who wrote Quran cannot be God unless he is mental what what we will choose who re remind me what verse what verse 3 chapter 3 verse number 65 read with me this verse and die laughing ye people of the book why dispute ye about abraham when the law and the gospel were not relieved till after him you don't understand look at this madness anyone notice with me how stupid this verse is I want to see in the text one of you tell me why why this verse is so stupid who want to help me why this verse is extremely stupid actually it's beyond stupidity it's an insult to stupidity anyone notice why Thank you very much. If Muhammad is the last one, how he say to the one, oh, hold on, hold on. You Christians and you Jews, you came after Abraham, so you cannot dispute about him. But are you are the last one? Like, you see, if Muhammad came the first one, and then he is saying to the Christians, hey, Christians, hey, Jews, I came before you, and I know about Abraham more. But the dumb, he, he forgot that he is the last one. So if the one who came after, he cannot dispute the one who came before. That's when you cannot dispute the Christian. You can't dispute the Jews. You know what I'm saying? What is the logic here? The logic is the one who came after, he cannot dispute about the one who came before. Based in this logic, the Jews can dispute with the Christians. The Christian cannot dispute with the Jews. The Christian can dispute with Muslims. The Muslims cannot dispute neither with the Christian, neither with the Jews. So look how funny this answer is. So in the future, if we say to you, which is the most stupid verse in the Quran, showing us the low IQ of the God of Islam, which one we will choose? Which one? Anyone remember? What chapter? Three sixty five, and this is the link. This is a very serious, stupid religion. This guy, he have no answer for them. I mean, how in the world this verse is written? The guy who wrote this verse, he was taking too much hashish. We go and we continue with the questions. Isn't it not blasphemy to say God has a son? First of all, when you answer a Muslim, you should say to him, what God has a son mean? Because a Muslim, he don't understand what does that mean? He have an Islamic understanding. What is the Islamic understanding? Islamic understanding that Allah he have sex with Mary and they have a son his name is Isa This is what the Muslim think that when we say that God has a son According to the Quran and we can prove it easy In 
in chapter 6 verse number 101 the Quran says I read with me carefully Muslims this is not me saying to him do the permal uh, origin of the heaven and the earth how can he have a son when he has no concert so the Quran spoke about God having son in a physical way not in a spiritual way which means there's a guy there's a wife they have sex together they have a son this is how Islam understand that God has a son and this is a clear proof that Islam cannot be written by God because a very simple logic to understand even what the Christian believe in correct how he can be God yet he don't understand what the Christian believe how I can say okay Allah is God but the God of Islam don't understand what Christianity is about there's no Christian belief that God have sex with Mary and they have a son his name is uh, uh, Jesus So what the Quran is speaking about here? In chapter 5, verse 116, the Quran says, Explain to us more. And when Allah He says, Oh Jesus, son of Mary, by the way, the whole Quran never mentioned the word Jesus, so don't be confused. Muslim even do not know how to quote the name of the Messiah correctly. The correct name, uh, Jesus, is, is coming from the Greek word. And because they don't have equal letters, this is why we say the word Jesus. But in fact, it is Yeshua. In Arabic, we say Yeshua. We never heard of someone, his name is Isa. And this is additional proof that Quran and Islam is a false religion. I mean, even the name, you cannot quote it correctly. And when Allah says, O Isa, the son of Mary, did you say to your to the people, take me and my mother beside Allah? This verse, chapter 5, verse 116, confirm chapter 6, verse 101, that Allah He understand that the, the divines in Christianity, they are three. Allah the husband Mary the wife and Isa the son which is a clear evidence that Muhammad never met a Christian he do not know what Christianity is about and he is a false prophet You can ask any Muslim from those who claim to teach about Islam today, they will say to you in a second, the Christian don't believe in Mary as God. Neither. Not even one single Christian believe in that. Mary is a woman chosen by God. Wonderful woman. But she is not a divine. She is a human like all of us. Christianity believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So what the Quran does, replace Mary with the Holy Spirit because of the ignorance of the founder of Islam. Right? How you know that somebody is a fool? Do you know how? Let him talk. There is many people they dress nicely they look you know put some some glasses in his eyes give him like a samsonite bag 
let make him wear a suit you might think this guy he is a scientist the second he start talking then you will notice if he is a smart or a fool correct and Allah is exactly that person you cannot even understand what Christianity is about what Mary what what are you talking about in different verse the Quran contradict itself the Quran claim that the Christians believe that Allah himself is the Messiah How you say that the Christian believe in the Trinity, yet you say that the Christian believe that the Messiah, he is Allah himself. Additional poo -poo. additional Additional proof of ignorance of the author of the Quran. Because now we don't have a trinity. If you say that the Christian believe that the Messiah, you see, Allah is a person, the Messiah is a person, Mary is a person. Okay, so now we got the trinity in Islam. Okay, then you say in different verse that the Christian believe that the Messiah, he is Allah himself, as you see in the screen. So what is the Trinity? <laughs> Do you see how silly this cult is? Very silly cult. This is why when we debate with Muslims, before you start defending the Bible, you better understand how silly this cult is. It's not just, okay, let us go to swim, jump in the, okay. You know, people, they think, uh, we know, like, okay, uh, I can dive in the ocean. Uh, I am very good in swimming. But this is not the, the, the case. Swim, swimming is something and diving is something else. So before we dive into a cult, try to refute people who believe in a cult. You better understand what that cult speak about you. Are we following, guys? Do we understand? Yeah, and again, yeah, thank you for those who they make a donation. Always, we really, we appreciate your support. And now I can go to, uh, by your help, uh, I can go to heaven, and uh, I will visit the Muslims in the heaven, and I will take a look at the versions, and I will take a selfie with them. I really appreciate those who support us. What we do here is extremely important. It's a free school, open for everybody. And those who like to learn, they are more than welcome. And the most important is, is not to be selfish. So what you learned here, now and today and tomorrow, you give it to someone else. Because one of the, you know, the beautiful thing about sharing knowledge is to give it for free. The second you make it as a profession, which means it's just a way to make money, it means you are not really doing a favor to anyone. If you make it only for those who afford it, that means you are just a business person. We want the poor and the rich, the one who have a computer and the one who cannot afford a computer, the one who is educated and the one who is a farmer, to be occupied with knowledge for the Bible says for free you took for free you give
always remember please to share with your friends what you learn and this is why we say please download my video this is why I don't even keep them the second I see people start posting here and there in the video it exists everywhere that's it I take my video down now if there is any question this is a this is a chapter five verse number 17 and just to show you how funny I mean the Quran I mean look at this in this verse the same verse it says the Christians the Christian they say that Allah is the Messiah the verse after it it says that the Christian says that he is the son of Allah <laughs> she's come up This is shish kebab. How in the verse before it, you just said that the Christian believe that the Messiah is Allah. He is him himself. He is Allah. He's not a different person. Correct, guys? Because if you see his, if you say he is Allah, that means he is a one person. This is the same person. So you say that the Christian they say that the Messiah is Allah, and then the verse after it, you say that the Christian they say that the Messiah is the Son of Allah. Which one of them is the one the Christian believe in? If you go in the Quran, just to show you the verse to speaking about literally about the Messiah being the Son of Allah. As a Muslim, you might say, or oh, the verse that the quoting after doesn't say exactly that. Read with me carefully. Chapter 9, verse number 30. The Jew says Israel is a son of Allah, and the Christian says the Messiah is son of Allah. But you just gave us a verse saying that the Messiah they say that he is Allah. What this guy is talking about so now what we will do do the Christian believe that the Messiah is son of Allah or the Christian believe that he is Allah it can't be both Because here we are talking about a person. Trinity does not believe. Trinity is believing that we have a three person. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Here, this is different. Here it says that Allah himself is the Messiah according to the Christian. By the way, we don't believe in Allah anyway. But I'm going with the Muslim. Let us say here they are they meant to say that the Christian they say uh, the Messiah he is the father. Do we have any Abdul have an objection? Any Abdul? For Quran only Muslims, which is the most weird statement in the Quran about the sun and the earth and science, all of it. I mean, if you ask me what is stupid about this book, that's that that's mean it's mean there is only one stupid thing. The whole book is stupid. You see, the Quran from verse number one to verse to the last verse is a chain of stupidity. But if you want to speak about science, anything the Muslim they say. It is scientific is the same verse you prove is stupidity in the Quran. Did I help you? As an example, give me an example yourself. What the Muslim they say about science and the Quran? And I will show you from any cho any choice you choose for me, I will show you that this is proving of stupidity, not science.
Anyone? Any verse the Muslim they bring to you to make the Quran a scientific book is the same verse we can prove the Quran to be not from God. Uh, Faris, he's asking me, you're still alive? Yes, I'm still alive and your prophet is dead. Sorry to tell you that, Faris. And my Lord is alive. One of the funny things about Muslims, they say to us, how Jesus can be God? Oh, look, actually, there's a question here. There's a question here. If Jesus died in the cross, was God dead for three days? How we answer this question? Anyone have an idea? How we can answer this question? If Jesus died on the cross, was God dead for three days? Let me teach you a very simple method here to destroy the question and the questioner without even him knowing that what he did to himself. What the Muslim here is trying to say to us, that God shall not die, correct? This is the purpose of the question. You see, always before you answer, ask yourself what is the purpose of this question? What this guy is trying to accomplish? Not just don't just jump into the to the answer right away and start. Oh, okay, let me tell you what happened. Don't don't before just wait. What is the purpose of this question? The purpose of this question, he want to prove to you that Jesus cannot be God, because how he died for three days. Okay, I want to go with you. If Jesus die, he cannot be God. Which means if Jesus did not die, he must be God. Well, thank you very much. You just approved to me that Jesus is God. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? The Muslim, he just approved to us from this question that Jesus is God. Thank you very much, Ray. According to Islam, Jesus is still alive <laughs> until now. <laughs> so he's asking you how God he died. Shouldn't you ask him how a human don't die? He's, you're trying to confirm to me that Jesus is a human, working 24 hours, seven days a week. Saying to me, Jesus is a human, Jesus is a human, he's just a prophet. He's just a and then at the end, you say to me that Jesus is alive. I mean, who is the city here? So, if the death of Jesus proved that he is not God, that means in Islam, Jesus must be God. Why all of them, they are dead? The Quran says that Muhammad is a Rasul, all messengers before him, they pass away. All. So, Jesus pass away or not? It's a contradiction. If you see the Muslim translation, you will see how funny it is. Chapter 3, verse number 144. Look what the Quran is saying. Muhammad is but a messenger, a messenger like whom he passed away before. This doesn't, this doesn't say that in Arabic it says, Muhammad is nothing but a messenger and all the messengers before him, they pass away, all of them. Change the translator. Ahmad Ali. Many messengers before him has gone. Look at this liar. It doesn't say that. It says, you know, the word khalat, it means they, they die, they are gone. They are gone in the, in the way of death. All of them. Here they say many. What do you mean many? So some they stay? <laughs> some they stay? What do you mean many? It doesn't say that. The word here in Arabic, Qad Khalat, 
you see it this is the word I am saying it's mean that all of them they are they are gone by death they die the same word appear in many places in the Quran خلت خلت قد خلت من قبلكم سنن what خلت mean they are gone demolished you know chapter 5 verse number 75 ما المسيح ابن مريم إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسول exactly the same sentence mentioned about محمد exactly the same the only difference is here we have the word Muhammad. Here we have the word Messiah, the son of Mary. Translation. The Messiah, the son of Mary, was no other than a messenger, messenger like whom had passed away before him. Hold on. That is a stupid. Because here you mean that he is dead too. If he is like them in the translation. In, in this translation, he is saying he is the same as them. But the, the verse doesn't say that. The verse says that the Messiah is a messenger. Who all messengers before him did die. And the same for the other verse, where it says that Muhammad is a messenger and all messengers before him they die. Very crazy book. All right? I mean, this book in every every page is a joke. And you know, when the Muslim they say that Jesus never been killed, this is what they say. Okay, let us go with this. But what we will do with this verse? We took the covenant of the children of Israel and we sent to them messengers every time there come to them a messenger which they themselves desire not some of these they called imposter and some of them they slay change the translator maybe you don't like this translation now if we ask any abdul name for me a messenger the jews they slay Any Abdul can name for us a messenger they slay? They cannot. Allah in the Quran, he have time to tell us about Zulqarnain, he found the sun set in the murky water. He found time to tell us about the ants speaking to the ants. He have time to tell us about the flying carpet of cinnamon. He have time to tell us about a woman, she have nice hair, in, she have no hair in her legs. He have time to tell us about a bird who Suleiman check him and he did not find him. He have time all of funny stupid stories, but he have no time to mention to us one name of one prophet was slain by the Jews. Which is more important, to tell me about the ant speaking to the ant, or to tell me who is the prophet the Jews they slain? Muslims, Muhammadan, who is the Jews? Who is the prophet the Jews they slain? Is that Jesus? 
Who's who's that? Give me a name and read with me carefully. By the way, it says some they slew. It's not only one. What you know in in uh, in Arabic it says, "Tariqan yaktulun," a group. So it have to be like five, six, seven. We don't know how many. It's not. It's not like one. So some they accuse of lie, and some they slay. Okay. Name for me one of the sum. Right? About Jesus in the Bible for all the Abdul's to know how good our Jesus. I want to say I was under process for grants it. And two months ago, I, I don't know what the grand said mean. Can somebody translate for me? What the word the grand said I mean? Uh, this brother here is asking me. Uh, CP, I wanted to say I was under process for grand said. I apologize. I do not know what the grand said mean. Green card. Green card. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's my, it's my, uh, oh, okay. Green card. I was busy. Well, I'm like, I'm happy for you that you get your green card, my friend. Anyway, my friend, before you explain to the Muslims the Bible, you have first to format the computer. Let me explain to you. If you have something wrong happen with your computer, Adding more files will not fix the computer. Do we agree? Do we agree, guys? So what people do, what we as a Christians do, we start explaining the Bible, but we forget that there is something wrong with the computer. And it doesn't matter how many files you add, it's still it's wrong there. You have to format it first. So before you start speaking about Jesus to those who been told wrong about Jesus you have to confirm first or to be sure that their wrong understanding about the wrong Jesus is not there no more otherwise you are wasting your time this is why you see for me I don't start speaking about the Bible because why I want to do that I speak to person about the Bible if he says to me I am out of Islam and now he want to know about Jesus now the computer is free and it's clean all the wrong information he got about the messiah is gone do you understand me somebody saying that the jews they killed john the baptist first of all the jews did not kill john the baptist that's not true. The ruler who killed John the Baptist, he is not even a Jew. He claimed to be a Jew just to make the, the Jews like him. He is not even a Jew. He's a Roman. Secondly, if the king he killed, John the Baptist, does not make the Jews kill him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let us say, uh, uh, I, I will use the same example with the story of Jesus. The Roman ruler, he is the one who ordered the crucifixion of Jesus. Is that correct? Is that correct? He is a ruler. He is the one who ordered his crucifixion because he is the king. He is the ruler. Do we agree? It was the Roman ruler who says, okay, put him in the cross because those are his Roman soldiers. But who is the one really was behind the crucifixion? It was the rabbi. So here you see the opposite. In that story, the ruler who did kill John the Baptist, not the Jews, says, oh, kill him. And the ruler wasn't even a Jew. Even yet, he claimed to be a Jew. In the story of Jesus is totally the opposite. The Roman ruler, he said, I wash my hands from this, guy, this person. He is innocent. He have nothing to nothing wrong. I wash my hands from his blood. So we cannot say really that the Roman ruler is the one who killed him. Correct? 
He just did their wish. They forced him to do it. They shout, we want the, the one who claimed to be the Messiah. He said to them, which one you want, Barabbas Bar 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 or the one who he called himself the Christ? They scream, says the Christ. So even that doesn't work. However, let us say that the Jews killed John the Baptist. Here it says some. And where is the story of John the Baptist being killed in the Quran? Shouldn't we ask Allah why he did not mention to us such an important story? Look, he mentioned the story of John the Baptist in the Quran. They call him in Quran, they call him Yahya. So why Allah don't mention how he was killed and who killed him? Uh, somebody asking me about anywhere in the Quran speak about John and Peter and Paul. The Quran did not mention names directly. If we go to chapter 36. This website is acting weird. I click at the thing. If you go to chapter 36. <clears throat> And start reading from verse number 13 where it says give them an example of the people we sent to a city okay and those who are who are your cities when we sent into them two the word here it says twin which is twin it's weird and then they deny them now this city this is those are those are sent not to the Jews this is the city of Antioch which is in the north of Syria, south of Turkey today. Who are the those? If you go to the books of interpretation, like Ibn Kathir and many other scholars, they agree and they admit that the first two were sent, it was Peter, Simon, and John, Yohanna. Yohanna in Arabic, John in English. And the third one, the verse after it says, here, the, the same verse, and then because they deny them, so we string them with the third. So the third one is the most powerful one. If you go to the interpretation, you will see that this is Bulos, which is the way of Muslims, they say and pronounce the name of Paul. In Arabic, we call him Paulos. All right. And you will find every Muslim cursing Paul, yet their scholars never do. And here, by the way, you should ask the Muslim a question. When they say to you, Paul is the one who corrupted the Christianity, say to him, why Allah did not mention Paul, neither your prophet? How come Zakir Naik, he knew who was corrupted Christianity, but your prophet never know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't it weird that somebody came to uh, 1,500 years after Muhammad? He is he, he he found out who is the one who corrupted Christianity, and he claimed it is Paul. But yet there are scholars for centuries, for 14 centuries, saying that Paul was a messenger of Allah. How silly is that? Any Muslim have a comment? So always remember that Muslim questions is not meant to, qu to, to ask, it meant to questions. Those are not really questions to learn. Those are questions is to make you suspect you believe and if you are not well versed and you do not know really what Christianity is about, maybe we can fool you. Are we good?
there is you know there is people you know sometimes a question is is is, uh, is made to make fun of somebody like you know you see somebody his clothes is dirty you say to him why are you why are your clothes are so clean you know and I know that he's not really asking he's just making fun right and this is how I see most of Islamic questions like in the other day if you remember Abdul he called me and he says oh I found that in the Bible that Jesus have have has a three a three fathers really what is that and then he says to me the Bible says that his real father is David and then the other verse says that it's Joseph and the other verse says uh, uh, God <laughs> this is this is because a person is silly right he's just being silly he is desperate bankrupt trying to find anything to attack Christianity with the same as one day a Muslim he says to me Jesus in the Bible says a drink our blood but this is not what Jesus said he did not give them blood he did not chop his hand and he put the blood in the cup and people start drinking his blood they were drinking juice and he said this is my blood speaking about the Jews as an example of what he have is going to or going to 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 give his life and he hold the bread and he says this is my this is my body will be broken for you but he broke a bread so they lie and they say even there's some silly atheists they say the same garbage the Christians they drink blood so according to those silly people they lie about us in order to make others hate us. Christians, they drink blood, brother. Yes, I can show you a verse. Jesus says, this is my blood. And the Christian, every every Sunday, they go and drink his blood. And now you expect Christians coming from the church and their mouth is full of a blood like a Dracula. I advise everybody, if you see Christian, don't forget to take garlic with you. And that explains why Muhammad, he said that Angels in Islam don't like garlic. Maybe they are Dracula too. You see it? All those references. And Muhammad make it more clear when he said that the angels don't enter a house of people who eat garlic. Look at this. And you know, garlic is really very useful. Right? Remember the Muslim he pray five times a day. So if he cannot go to, to a place where people pray and uh, he, because he ate garlic, that's mean he cannot eat garlic at all. Garlic and onion and all those things, it's haram based on this. And what kind of angels they will be hurt or hurt by, by garlic? Right? Uh, well, you know, you see, Islamic Islamic source about Muhammad conquering the Arabian Peninsula is it's very like you know you cannot trust really source, but we can assume that Muhammad at least he conquered most of it. But then when Muhammad he die. There is a revolution happening against Islam. This is what it's called the war of apostate And you can search it. You will find that right away after Muhammad he passed away People who've been forced into Islam. They became apostate. This is why the war is called the war of apostate It's not called the war of garlic the war of apostate
why Christian uh, let, let, let's show you Muslims uh, uh, you know when they speak why Christian is afraid where is where is uh, the text and please guys maintain your text don't say any hateful uh, uh, text against Muslims otherwise you force me to ban you we don't appreciate any bad words Muhammad Irfan he says why CB is afraid to debate outside his own channel where he can mute and uh, hassle my friend just to show you that you are silly you can do your live broadcast and call me I will, I will call you <laughs> and let everybody love open your broadcast before you call me bring your people to hear you and to hear me Silly, why you Muslim don't open your Skype so I can call you in Skype? Why we don't see Zachary next? Says, Hey, I am here, Christian Prince. Come and call me, and I will call him. Why Mimi Hijab? You run away from me. Why Shabir Ali? Run? I will call you. Open your channel, potatoes. So they will not dare to open their Skype to receive calls and they complain about me opening my Skype. Call me, answer me, silence me. Elijah, I mean, God is with us. <laughs> and God, he prayed for not to. All right? Muhammad Efran, you see, you can try to give us a bad reputation as much as you want. You speak about begging for money nobody big for money as your prophet because he is a man of money let me show you you can say whatever you want people are laughing guys did i ask you for money anyone here did, did hear me saying hey guys pay me it's for free everybody is welcome and not only that i ask people to download my videos and take it everywhere and that will make me have less subscribers but look what your god he said Oh, sorry, I mean your Prophet Muhammad. You're a Prophet Muhammad. He claimed that if you give Allah alone, Allah will forgive your sin. I never say to a Christian, if you give me alone, God will forgive your sin. <laughs> Chapter 64, verse number 17. This is your Prophet. Say all kind of lies you want against me, but you cannot answer this. What kind of a man he says that if you pay me money and he claimed that this is a loan for Allah, since since when God he need a loan? The God who created the silver, the the, the, the universe, the, the gold, the diamond, he need a loan. And if you give him a loan, he grant you forgiveness. Are you there, Irfan? Did you give Allah alone yourself or you are thinking about it? My brother, if you don't give Allah alone, you better give it right now because you will be forgiven. The only religion who believe that you can bribe God is the religion of Muhammad. See, he will he changed the topic now. He would not talk about it. Coward. Can you explain to me how the one who gave a loan to Allah he will be forgiven? Guys, this is saying in front of you. If you loan Allah beautiful loan, he will double it for you in credit. What? And he will grant you forgiveness. Forgiveness. Grant you forgiveness because I give him money. We can bribe God. My friend, if you ever heard somebody saying, if you pay me, God forgive you, that means he is a scam. As simple as that. Because God, he don't forgive people because they give money. And nobody can bribe God. But only in Islam. Somebody saying me, I translate your video to Spanish. My friend, I will be so glad if you do so. To all languages in the world, if you can. 
Have fun. Are you there, Erfan? Allah will double my uh, Allah will double my credit if I give Muhammad money and he will he will grant me forgiveness so look at this Christian Prince he opened a, a program every day explaining how stupid the Quran is and now all what I need to do I will send a hundred dollar to Allah who is going to receive it uh, Muhammad hijab and Allah will double my credit and will forgive all my sin because now they are replacing him you know the, the scammers are, are are many so now anyone he claimed that he is the one actually Mimi hijab he he, he make a, he make a video and he recite exactly the same verse we see here in front of us who want to give Allah a mortgage man the same verse chapter 2 verse number 245 go watch the video he finished the debate with David Wood right away he start Women, you see Allah, and they start crying. Who is going to give Allah a good loan? You know, he's, he's begging for money. Have you ever seen Christian Prince after a debate saying, Who is going to give a Christian Prince a loan? I don't. I start my program, I finish my program, and most of the time, even I don't say thank you for those who give the nation. Most of the time, is that correct, people? When the last time you heard me saying, hey guys, hello, no money, no honey. <laughs> Speak of yourself, Abdul. This is your prophet, not us. This is your prophet. CP blocked me? Blocked you where? You must be a very smart person. Because only I block fool. Any Abdul? No, no, we ignore no one. You know, you see here, you see the Muslims. Look, let me something. If somebody is causing a big harm to Islam, so how we can affect him so people will not listen to him? They will talk about him, maybe money. I mean, anything. It's just to make your reputation bad. This is the whole idea, and and you know that. Why this guy is attacking me? I mean, he don't even know who I am. He never met me. He don't know how I look like. He never know my name. What is the purpose of all of this? Why all the Muslims, they, they attack me, they make articles against me? Because he's a Christian prince. As simple as that. You know the reason. You do not need to be a genius to know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and that is an honor for me. You see, if those people, they start saying to me, God bless you, it's mean there's something wrong with me. It's mean I'm corrupt. The second you start hearing them saying Christian Prince is a nice person, it's mean there's something wrong with the Christian Prince. As simple as that. This is why you see Muslims, they, they speak uh, nice about James uh, White. Why? Because he served their propaganda. <clears throat> Anyway, do we have do we have any Muslim have a question? And be careful, guys. Now, if you if you give donation to Christian Prince, that will hurt the feeling of Efron. Efron will be upset. Please don't do that. Efron, he will be like, look at this, look at this. They just gave him a donation. Efron, make make some tea, brother. Who wrote the gospel? The gospels have their names. I mean, this is a silly question. The gospel of John, written by John. I mean, come on. Why it's called the gospel of John if John is not the one who wrote the gospel? So imagine this. This is the book of a Christian prince, and Christian prince is not the one who wrote it.
Yeah, well, you know, we don't want to go out of the topic like you guys asking questions like about the Quran will come in the judgment day as a man. Yes, supposedly. Mad, mad story. I, I think Muhammad, he was a person who cannot keep his mouth shut. And the more he talk, the more he bring crazy stuff. Quran is going to come as a person. Allah will slaughter death. Have you ever heard of somebody can, how you can slaughter death? Is death as a person? And here we are not talking about something metaphorical. Allah will slaughter death literally. Any Muslim? Yeah, actually, I decided to come this early in the morning in my time here so I can be with people who they live in Asia and Indonesia, uh, Philippines, Thailand, uh, you know, etc. I try my best. You see, how many times today I did? I did it twice. The day before is the same. Uh, I mean, I do my best, really. If you see my eyes now, I have two balloons in my eyes because I'm not sleeping good. And I'm spending too much, you know, answering people. Yeah, you know, I was, if I don't come, I feel guilty. To myself, that's it. Today I'm done. I'm not going to do live chat again until tomorrow, at least. And then after a few hours after, I feel guilty. <laughs> I will try to resist, you know. I think next week maybe I will try to resist coming on air for some time I'll try maybe I can do I can do so let us hope uh, <clears throat> yeah you know uh, health is very important and I agree and I have to be careful I'm very fine my friend thank you very much apparently your video has been banned in Indonesia someone advised this earlier in text I don't think they can buy my, my maybe they can ban you see I receive an email from the Pakistani government I think I shared that with you before right do you remember I receive an email from YouTube saying we receive a complaint from uh, an official Institute government Institute and when I start reading the email it sounds like this is maybe USA government or something something because sounds serious and then at the end it says Pakistan. Pakistan. Imagine the government of Pakistan. And by the way, still I have the emails in my email box. I did not share it because I was afraid maybe YouTube will be upset for sharing such a private email. But imagine how silly the government of Pakistan sending an official letter to YouTube asking them to ban a guy his name is a christian prince i mean how terrified how terrified christian prince versus Pakistan government this is how scary what we do to the point a country like Pakistan is terrified from a guy he i have what like now because it's too uh, too early i have only not many people listening but let us say a thousand people listening 2,000 people. Why a country like Pakistan would be scared from someone like Christian Prince? Who is this guy? That is showing us how weak this cult is. You see, Islam is protected by government. Christianity don't have any government to protect it. You can't say anything about Jesus. Neither in USA, neither in France, neither in England. No, there's no Christian country that have a law that says if you say something against Jesus, we take you to court. The only way to protect Islam is to mute the ones who expose it. And by the way, they did not only send me one email. I have a list of email from the Pakistani government coming to YouTube. And what YouTube did, did, they did not really take down my video, but they informed me that those videos, they will not be seen in Pakistan. 
because they receive a complaint from the Pakistani government about them and after reviewing my video they found there's nothing wrong with them but they have to obey it with regulation of that country right <clears throat> Anyway, I think we had enough for today. Uh, a Christian plane. One more time you speak about this uh, other account, I will ban you again here. You told me about it. I told you I didn't know why they ban you, but nobody is banned here unless he says something bad. So one more time you repeat the same thing, I will ban you again. Anyone here is banned is banned for a reason either you use a filthy language or a hateful word against doesn't matter who Muslims they call me names. I don't ban them But a Christian he claimed to be a Christian he used filthy language or he used uh, Whatever language I will be the first to ban you Anyway, are we are we good for today? So I hope today we had we had this uh, this uh, topic is is covered, and I hope that soon you guys will be able to download the video and post it all over again. All right. Please don't forget that I don't keep my videos in my channel. So in the future, if you want to find the same video, try to search for the same title tomorrow. Uh, in YouTube search engine and try to make a filter like okay search for what is posted just last 24 hours otherwise you might find a video I made maybe a year ago with the same title just to be sure this is the newest one uh, please download and this is the way we can keep always the knowledge spread not only in one place I don't want my videos to be I did not I do, I do not make videos for me I'm sick of this cult I wish one day I can stop talking about it forever I'm totally sick of it, sick of it so we make these videos so we can spread all over and if you can if you speak different languages please translate you don't need my permission Spanish Chinese Urdu uh, uh, Indonesian Pakistan whatever you can all right, and not only that by the way you will be blessed by the Lord for you are doing your own work now Because yes, I am the one who made the video But when you take the video yourself and you post it again and you add a translation or without translation and Then somebody watch it and he was saved Guess what? It is you because of you this person. He saw the truth It's like you know somebody he is a cook in the kitchen and somebody he carried the food for the for the needy you get a blessing for bringing the food to him because the needy did not receive it unless you bring it to him and we don't hate Muslims and we want them to be saved and what we do is help for everybody the Muslims the Christians the atheists the Jews the Hindus anyone who want to know the truth and the truth will set you free so we insist that we should love everybody and the best way to love somebody is to help him to see what is right and what is wrong with this I want to say thank you for being here may the Lord bless you and until we see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you if the Lord want soon again bye bye take care